welcome back to my channel guys uh, in this video it's a continued part to the university of canada west review video so this video was requested by a lot of people so there were a lot of comments uh, on my last video and i have a lot of dms asking me different questions so i'm going to ask answer all the questions in this video so let's go Also, if you haven't seen my previous videos, uh, the link might be right here for the part one and part two video. So you can go and watch it before watching this video. So this video is about how is the UCW structure? When can you take breaks? And a lot of different questions. So let's start. So UCW, this is for MBA. I don't know about bachelors or um, any other courses they offer because I have done my MBA. So that is purely based on my experiences. So UCW has 15 courses, okay, so 11 courses are mandatory courses. The three courses are the core courses, like if you want to uh, specialize in finance, then you take three finance courses. If you want to specialize in marketing, you take those three courses. If you want to specialize in HR, you take those three courses. Finance, project management, so and so. So you can take those three courses. So out of the 11 courses, two are accounts and finance. So if you're not from accounts background, if you're from engineering background and IT background, so don't worry, see, there are only two courses for two and a half, two and a half months each. So I think if you can survive engineering, so you can definitely survive this, right? This small course or, you know, I can give you a better idea. You know, if you don't have any experiences with this, right accounts but you have good experience with it you know there are courses like business analytics and there are courses like finance and it in business analytics you do good but you don't know anything about finance so what you do you make friends with people who know finance and finance people don't have any idea about analytics it so you guys can help each other that's how you're going to survive so let's go ahead so three courses were your course courses out of the 11 mandatory courses accounts and finance are one of those people think it's hard but it's not hard you'll survive it's easy the rest nine courses are ethics easy again hrmt talent management marketing digital transformation opmt operations management project management leadership in global context strategic management and analytics so people who are not from IT background feel analytics course is very tough and analytics was something I did not have it. Like digital transformation and analytics are the new courses I did right now. But when I did it two years, uh, a year back, when I finished my course, so I did not have it. So watch some videos or like uh, just concentrate in your class for all these videos if you're not from IT background. Mm. so after these there is one exit course so the exit course has four options you can take one so one is small business management one is capstone project and i think for this capstone project you need four years of work experience uh, there is consulting research project and meant launch your business and Sorry, there's one more. This is graduate program, internship. So for this program, uh, when you are on your last semester or yeah, you can do it in your last semester. So when you're in the last semester, so in your fourth semester, a semester before that, you have to register for that with the college. If you don't register, you cannot take that course. So there are two options for this course. Either you can tell the university that you want to apply under this course. So they will find an internship for you or you can also find an internship for yourself. You can apply on Indeed and all if a company wants to give you internship, so you can use that. So the benefit of that is like you can work and you don't have to study one course, right? But the thing about this is that when you work, right? Like the course will finish in one hour, but you have to go like five days for that internship. So that is the thing but usually if you get an internship like this it's very good very beneficial and uh, 
you can like some i know some of my friends who have been um, who got this internship and then they were hired by the company for full time so look out for all these opportunities it's very important so now the next part of this video is passing rate so everyone is always asking me what is the passing rate how much do i have to score so passing rate for every 15 courses to pass any course you need only 60% but overall you need 72% that is a 3 cgpa this is a catch guys so even if you get 60 60 you have to average your courses out with a 72 Like if you get sixty in one courses, think you are not good in accounts, okay? So you get a sixty in there. So try to get eighty, eighty-five, seventy-six in other courses, so you can average out those courses where you get less marks. So, what if you don't get sixty? So there are three things they do university. So in your first semester, if you don't get seventy-two percent, a three CGPA, they will put you on academic warning. The second semester you don't get a three CGPA. They put put you on academic probation. And the third thing, if you don't get a seventy two mark in your third semester also, then they put you on an academic suspension. So academic suspension is this that they will not allow you to sit for the next uh, uh, semester. you cannot work also on that semester so you cannot study also you cannot work it's like you have to take a mental break and you have to just concentrate on yourself that where are you going so this is one thing people don't like because many of my friends who are on academic suspension because they could not meet the 72 mark but it's quite easy guys like there are something this was supposed to happen with me also like i had got an academic warning i had got an academic probation and almost until on my suspension that was the th third semester and that was the third semester i made that mark so it happens so you don't need to worry about it so you just need to study and it will happen okay the next <coughs> the next thing is people ask about break schedule so when can you take a break so after your third term you can take a break and after your third term even you take a break you can work full 40 hours in that time okay and people are very confused with this but no you can work full time in that and also during your semester breaks like from term 1 to term 2 before it starts you have like a 10 days off around that time and you can also work full time in that time so it doesn't matter you had applied visa whenever so this is like the basic rules of canada so in your break you can work full time like semester breaks and also when you have taken a full time break for 3 months or 3 months yeah so you can work full time in that so now the next part of the video is the term schedule so the term runs for almost around 2 and a half months and in that your penalty so fast so let me tell you how how are different things in the term so in each course you need um, the each course has 72% of your individual grades and 30% of team right so these are all performance based for example if you score very low in individual and in team you score high so they are still going to grade you low only and this had happened with me so and if you score um, individually high and in team low but still you are going to get marks it's like they are trying to look at you in a perspective that oh is this person individually she has not performed anything so in team definitely it is because of a teammate that she is getting grades okay and sometimes here in canada uh, in ucw uh, everything happens on peer evolution so if you are doing group group projects they are always graded on your peer evolution so what happens in that so after your project is done the professor will send you a sheet you have to write your teammates name and you have to score them 
so if you score someone um, a b c d that uh, you know that if you don't like him sometimes people do right if someone is bossing them around they'll put low grade for that one and then uh, professor will see oh this person has individually scored very good then why isn't he scoring in the team so maybe because of team conflicts or something so that is why even if you score individually it's very important if you score everything good in individual teams you are automatically going to get marks but if you are scoring scoring low in teams so uh, sorry scoring low in individual so it's very difficult to get through your team because team individual is 70% and team is 30% so this had happened to me also so in my first semester only i did not know anything about anything like that was like something i wasn't expecting at all so there was this course like mgmt leadership in the global context so in that all my individual assignment i had failed like 1% 2% 3% 4% like all these four assignments i had got this so and in the last um, last team assignment my team got a very good grade but she is like maybe she did not do individually good so she must have not contributed and she failed me for that course so look out guys if you perform poorly in individual there are some professors out there who are going to like target that but not every professor is like that not every professor will judge you on your team base uh, individual basis but there are professors and this is the university's requirements so let's talk about uh, next part that is books and other expenses so something which people had asked me so books my friend asked me can i buy a physical book so dude and she asked me do you have the book of this course so guys you cannot take anyone's book you cannot take physical books so this books are no sharing it's not a physical book that is why you cannot share it with and it is a login based so if mine is rose jesusa so yours will be whatever your name is you you will have a different login for that and it's connected quizzes so so the professor will put your email id in that um, course uh, login and you have to buy from that link only don't buy it from anywhere else just buy from that link only and guys the purchase is very mandatory you don't have any option to skip it so you have to buy it Mm. and some professors are very good like me so they will say oh no 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 you don't have to buy it don't worry so that is better right so minimum price for that books are 45 dollars plus 12 percent tax in bc there is a 12 percent tax on everything so whatever you see in the market anywhere just have mentally prepared that it will have a 12 percent tax so 45 plus tax will be 50.50 dollars and 40 cents so this is the minimum and maximum there are books in accounts i guess my friend had purchased which was 104 like 104 dollars canadians so i know it's an additional ex- expense for you guys as a student but you have to do it you don't have any option so the next is skills required like people ask me like i don't have this thing that thing like what do i need what do i need to learn so so skills required guys there are only basic skills required you have to just know everything what is going on you have to just keep your mind open to everything so you don't need any finance background any it background you don't need to have like excellent excel skills or word skills or learn but the only thing i would say is learn apa guys because we have because we are coming from a different country having a different education system so here everything is only assignment based and sometimes there are exams but everything is usually assignment based so it is something you should learn and even the university in your first semester every semester before the semester begins this um, have their apa workshop so if you are not familiarized with it so try to take the apa um workshop it's very important for you so the next thing is scholarships everyone wants scholarships right everyone wants to pay less fees and get a more scholarship so then they can avoid paying fees so how to get scholarships so the most important thing is write a good sop when you applying for the university 
and I have researched at UCW. So there are three kinds of scholarships that they offer. Some are country based. So if you're from Thailand, Sri Lanka or some other countries, you can go on the website. I have put it in the description. You can go and check it out. So the next thing is on your IELTS score. So if you have a good IELTS score, they will give you a good scholarship around three to four thousand dollars. So the next one, the third one, the third most important one because it's a big scholarship. It's a scholarship of excellence. So if you have scored um, in your um, uh, third year graduation, if you have scored an excellent score so like me, so you can get an excellence academic scholarship of ten thousand dollars. So you can imagine ten thousand dollars. So you don't have to pay only any fees. Like you have to pay five to seven thousand dollars. So that is one thing. Uh, so I had got it because I had good scores in my TYB comp. So if you are thinking how did I get a good score, I always say that I am not a excellent or a good student. So guys, during my time it was COVID, so everything was in lockdown. So whatever I had, it was online, and I had got good grades. So that is one thing I had got good grades for. I am not so great in studies, and I never wanted to study in my life. But here I am. I did my MBA. So. That was the thing. How how I got the scholarship of ten thousand dollars. So next part of the video and the last part of the video is how to get rid of your foundation. So foundation course is a three months course. So except the five months of your five semesters of your MBA, this is an additional three months of foundation. People have it. So usually, um, you know, I'm gonna share a tip with you how you can remove it. So if you have got a foundation course, <coughs> if they are telling you to take a foundation course, so these are the two things which will help you remove it. If you have a work experience, so and if you have any finance background, so if you have done your bachelor's in commerce, in BBI, BAF, and anything related to finance and accounts, so you can remove it. All you have to do is mail the university. That I have so and so years of experience. Doesn't matter in whatever field, you have so and so experience. So I don't need the foundation course. And they usually remove it. I have many friends of mine who have done it, and they have got it removed. So guys, I why I'm telling you because foundation course. When you start your foundation course, you cannot work in that three semesters. So it is like you are taking the foundation course and you are paying seven thousand dollars, and you cannot. Work in that three months, so it's an expense. So and one more thing, uh, one of someone had texted me that you know he has an MBA with an uh, English course. So I don't know they are maybe introducing these things right now because IELTS had lower down scores for your IELTS. So maybe they are giving you this course. So again, if you are getting that course. Uh, it's your English course. I don't know how you can remove it until and unless you can either provide, show them that you have, um, uh, school, you have done your schooling or your um, uh, college in a uh, English medium course. So that is the only way you can remove it. But you can try it by mailing the university because these courses are at the expense of your own self. So you cannot work in that. I told you again. So. Just think bravely before doing anything. UCW is again. I have told hundreds and hundreds of times. It's a good university because you finish everything so quickly. You don't even understand, and that is one benefit. And again, there are a lot of benefits for your permanent residence when you file your permanent residence. And I'm gonna share it in my next upcoming videos. So guys, please, I will request you that if you like this video, that please like it so maybe it can reach a. Uh, mm, uh, Uh, many other different audiences, and also you can comment down below so it can give me a reach on YouTube because I don't have much subscribers. And if you have ever seen my video, and if you ever meet me when you come down, come to Vancouver, I really wish the people who are watching my videos, you guys can all come to Vancouver. But when you come to Vancouver, if you ever see me, you can just wave a hi to me or just come and say talk to me. Like you can ask me anything. But you know, I would really like if someone would see my videos and come here. and would really come and have a chat with me so like that would make me really happy so thank you guys for watching my videos please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel and comment down below if you want me to make any other videos thank you